please welcome the president of Washington State University, Kirk Schultz. Good afternoon. I'm Kirk Schultz, president of Washington State University. It's great to see everybody here. It's great for all of us to be here participating in this fantastic event. I've been told by several people over the course of the last two days how great it's been not only to attend the sessions featuring top national security research, but connect with people in academia, industry, and government. The last two years have been challenging when it comes to gathering great minds together in person like this. And it's been a pleasure to be able to host this conference in person both here on our Pullman campus and virtually across the nation. That being said, I want to ex extend a special thanks to Dr. Stephanie Tompkins and the entire DARPA team that made this event a reality. How about a big round of applause for them? Thank you. DARPA reaches for transformational change instead of incremental advances, but does not perform its engineering alchemy in isolation. It works within an innovation ecosystem that includes academic, corporate, and government partners. I want to take a moment to recognize a few of the organizations that have gathered with us this week as part of that ecosystem. This list includes Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories, the Boeing Company, Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, Lockheed Martin Corporation, DEVCOM Army Research Laboratory, Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab, the U.S. Air Force, U.S. Navy, Gates Ventures, and many, many more. Thank you for being here. DARPA's constant focus on the nation's military services creates new strategic opportunities and novel tactical options. For decades, this vibrant, interlocking ecosystem of diverse collaborators has proven to be a nurturing environment for the intense creativity that DARPA is designed to cultivate. We're grateful to be able to bring this ecosystem to our campus this week and equally grateful to hear from the many researchers that are conducting research designed to keep our nation safe. We'd like to extend a big kook thank you to everyone for attending both in person and virtually here at Washington State University. And without further ado, please give a final welcome to Dr. Stephanie Tompkins for our closing remarks. Dr. Tompkins. Thank you, President Schultz. And to all of you, all right, last time that you get to see me or have to see me, Congratulations, because you survived. I feel like we should give out merit badges. Um, and uh, it's been a very intense two days, especially for our risers. So I know everybody came in and with their own set of expectations and their own backgrounds. So I imagine it's been a different experience for each of you. Um, but here are a few things that I'm hoping that you're going to be able to take home. First, um, the fact that the world around us really has changed dramatically. The pace of change has itself increased. And our nation faces new and substantial threats. The, the potential uh, solution space is rich with science and technology opportunities, especially at the intersections. So the intersections of specialties, of communities, and of perspectives. Because of this, we have encouraged you to push beyond your expertise and your comfort zones. It's critical to how we work. We think it's critical to solving most hard problems. So that technological solution space uh, really needs an entire ecosystem with all of its natural messiness, redundancy, and competing solutions, and gradual evolution. But within that ecosystem, someone has to be disruptive and be bold and willing to fail. So everyone who came here new to DARPA, if that role appeals to you, then consider spending some time working with us, or at least working on national security problems. So I'm going to have to give Admiral Hill a hard time for his shameless plug on uh, MDA's Innovation Day, but it would actually be awesome um, for you to work with MDA and help solve some of those key challenges. Um, and we partner with them, as he mentioned. There's some, some really cool um, synergistic areas where we're working together. Our servicemen and women live lives of incredible self-sacrifice. Helping to keep them safer is one way to repay that sacrifice, to serve our nation, and ultimately to serve all of society. So a few things you might think of doing, you know, respond to a DARPA broad agency announcement. This is our way of announcing each of those 50 new, approximately 50 new programs that we launch each year. Talk to a DARPA program manager. Share your ideas for you think, what you think the next DARPA program should do. Or think about becoming a program manager yourself. Or becoming a CETA contractor. Or a partner in one of DOD's many labs and engineering centers. 
Talk to us, talk to us, talk to us, talk to all of us and help exchange ideas. As I said, okay, that was a bit of a list, I lost count, but just a few things that I hope you're gonna take away from this conference. What I'm imagining you're waiting for was not my list, but the announcement that I promised you. So next up, um, we actually will share a brand new initiative that uh, will close out our time together this week. So as you've already heard, um, I think we've gotten the message out loud and clear. The thing that concerns me the most is the idea that we never hear. We're here because we're trying to meet people and hear your ideas. Sometimes though, um, it's not just because you don't know about us. Sometimes it's because the requirements in the system including access to classified work, is what keeps you at arm's length from DARPA. So for that, Dr. Greg Cooperman, the DARPA program manager who conceived of and is leading this effort, is joining me to explain the new initiative, which we think will open up a path for much more innovation for more organizations. So Greg, over to you. All right, thank you, Dr. Tompkins, for the introduction. Uh, I really appreciate <clears throat> the opportunity to be here with everyone. Uh, to talk about the new initiative that DARPA is putting forward, bringing classified innovation to government and defense systems, or bridges for short. Uh, I've been at DARPA for about two years now. Uh, I've learned many things in my two years, but two of the things that I've learned very uh, acutely is first, the commercial sector is where some of the greatest innovation is happening. And second, DARPA has a lot of difficulty capturing that innovation for our classified problems. There's a catch-22 for working with new companies in the classified space. We want innovation for classified problems. We're DARPA, innovation is kind of our thing, but we can only talk about classified problems with companies that already have clearances. And to get that clearance, a company needs to already have a contract to do classified work. So in simpler terms, to get classified work, you already need to be doing classified work. And that makes it almost impossible for a new company to penetrate and enter the classified workspace. For Bridges, we want to break that unvirtuous cycle. We're looking to connect the innovators, you guys, from the commercial world directly to classified problems DARPA is looking to solve. So the way we plan to do that is relatively straightforward. Next slide, please. Thanks. We're going to stand up a classified consortium based around different topic areas that DARPA is interested in. And the purpose of the consortium will be to have you, the innovator, learn about classified problems and communicate directly with DARPA program managers about classified topics that they are thinking about. Most importantly, the contract for the consortium will have a need to know for classified work, which will enable you and your company to get clearances. The exact steps of how it'll work are as follows. First, DARPA will release a new topic area for the Bridges Consortium. We haven't settled on the specific ones yet, but some examples could be next generation antennas or white hat hackers. If you and your company are interested in participating, you'll then submit a few pages explaining why your company is capable of innovating in that topic area. The main idea here is to convince us that we should sponsor you for a clearance so that you can help solve some of the challenging classified problems. Or to use some of the Air Force lingo that I've picked up, why should we let you behind the green door? Finally, if your company is selected, then DARPA will sponsor your company to do classified work, and you can then begin the process of getting clearances. Now, once you're cleared, we'll begin working together at the appropriate classified levels. We'll hold regular meetings with different stakeholders where you'll be able to learn about problems, share your thoughts, and engage directly with, what, with the government at whatever classification level is needed. DARPA will provide access to classified networks at multiple sites across the country. And that way you can email, do phone calls, write white papers, and ultimately write proposals. And in the end, all of this is to enable capturing your innovation in the classified space. The goal is to enable you to help DARPA develop new program concepts and ultimately get a contract for classified work. Now, I want to stress, Bridges is not meant to be meetings for the sake of meetings. We want new programs to come out of this, and we want you to be part of those programs. The end goal of Bridges is to allow you, the innovator, to do what you do best, innovate, but now at the classified level. Today is the official announcement of the DARPA Bridges initiative. Shortly, we're going to go live with the website and draft solicitation. We're starting with a draft solicitation because we want to hear from you to see if this meets your needs on how to work with the government. So please do let us know. We know there's going to be lots of questions. We're going to have a website that further explains what we're doing, and we'll also publish an FAQ on that website that will hopefully answer a lot of those questions. We have an email address of bridges at darpa.mil that's set up that'll help engage with you guys and help us answer your questions. Finally, 
Thank you, everybody. We're really looking forward to working with you all. I will be available upstairs for questions in the senior ballroom. Thanks, Greg. I hope that excites some of you. Um, it's pretty exciting for me. It actually sounds simple, but it takes a lot of work uh, within the government construct to make something like that happen. And we're really exciting to, to, to launch the experiment. Um, OK. So as you've heard in many different ways over the past couple of days, from our perspective at DARPA, the technological future is both bright with opportunities and fraught with potential for technological surprise from our adversaries. I personally am newly energized by the conversations of the past, three, uh, past few days, so thank you very much. The promise of a new infusion of talent in our innovation ecosystem, renewed sense of purpose from our current partners, all of those are what I, I'm sort of taking away from this event. I'm personally confident that decades from now, people will look back at the converse, conversations that we had during the DARPA Forward series and recognize the germination of ideas that created a better future. So I have a lot of thanks to offer. First, I thank all of you for being part of it with us, taking time out of your busy lives to come spend a couple of days with DARPA. I thank all of our speakers, panelists, demonstrators, um, presenters, whatever they did. There was, a, there was an immense infusion of talent up here on stage, and I know there was a lot of work um, prepping, thinking, dry running um, to, make, to sort of make the content um, what you actually saw in the final stage. I thank WSU. Um, their leadership and all of their staff. They were incredible partners helping us to make this work. And finally, um, I, I should actually preface this next set of thanks with the fact that you know, we, we both show and tell. We've done a lot of telling you and, and a little bit of showing you what it's like to be a part of DARPA. I think one of the best ways that we showed you how amazing it is to work at DARPA was to actually let you in, um, see how incredible our support staff is. They just made everything happen. So almost a year of planning has gone into this. Um, it, it, it's, it's always amazing to me because it did not involve me or most of the uh, DARPA program managers having to spend most of their time. Um, so I want to offer my thanks to the incredible planning, support, and production team that we have here. Um, all the folks that you saw in, the, in the, the blue shirts that say staff, a lot of people that you can't see who are tucked away behind the scenes, even now, getting ready to cue the next set of events, um, please join me in a huge round of applause for them because they are what made this place, this event happen. All right. So I think um, we, we will still try to shoot some people upstairs to make sure they can answer any questions you have, especially about the uh, New Bridges Initiative. But uh, safe travels, all of you, going back to wherever you uh, started from. And thanks again for spending time with DARPA.